Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to keep looking at Magic 2013 and we're going to move on and we're going to look at Depths of Power, which is a uh, blue and red deck. Uh, here we've got the deck list here, we've got 18 creatures, 9 instants, 7 sorceries, 2 artifacts and 24 land. And we've got a mana curve off to the side there. Uh, so let's start looking at this deck here. So. The foil face rare is a Talrand Sky Summoner. So uh, in the last video I said I went to an M13 pre-release, had a great time. Talrand is basically the reason I had a great time that pre-release, because um, I uh, opened opened him in one of the packs, built a blue-red sort of spells, matter decks, and uh, yeah, it was great. Had a had a great time winning <laughs> winning a bunch of games with Talrand. Um, so two and two blue for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, uh, you make a 2-2 two -two blue drake uh, creature that's got flying uh, for free, which is great. This is such a good um, ability just to tack on onto every instant and sorcery spell you cast. Yeah, it's just really, really solid. Um, you could argue that Talrand is a little, um, maybe a little vulnerable because you know it's four mana. He's a you know two two. He's got no sort of protection abilities. Uh, you know he's not like hexproof or anything. But that's fine because um, I feel like even if you get like the ability to go off once. It's okay because, you know, let's say what well, a 2 2 flyer at this time of the game with no abilities is, well, like three mana, like Windrake stats. So to tack that ability on for free onto, you know, even stuff like Unsummon or Shock or whatever, super, super good. Like really, really good um, foil face rare to have, I think, and a really good blue legendary creature to have, uh, have in the deck. So yeah, I really like, really like Tower Round. I would, ooh, would I say. Out of the five M thirteen legendary legendary creatures, is Talrand the best? Oh, it's it's oh it's tough because I keep going, I keep flip flip flopping between Talrand and Krenko in in terms of who I think is is the best. But Talrand is really really good. Yeah, really really like it. Really good, really good strong ability. Excellent start to uh, looking at the deck. Uh, so the other rare of the deck is Stormtide Leviathan, uh, which we've seen before. I think it was in M twelve, M eleven. It was in. It's been in a previous core set, and it is, I think, in core sets for a while going forward. Um, so five and triple blue for an eight eight with Island Walk. Um, all lands are islands in addition to their other types and creatures without flying or Island Walk can't attack. So big, big game ending creature here comes down eight mana, eight eight. Um, turns everything into islands. Um, it's got Island Walk, so it's basically unblockable, and it stops, uh, it's got like a moat effect, so it stops um, everything attacking apart from flyers or other Island Walkers. So it doesn't have like a huge, I would say it doesn't have a huge amount of synergy what the deck is doing, because it is essentially like a blue-red spell deck, but this is like a big threat, like if the game is dragging on, this comes down and it's going to, you know, it helps close out the game, um, essentially. So yeah, um, I, think it's, I think it's okay. I do think that maybe there's slightly better choices in the set, but I think this is still, like, perfectly fine. Uh, and then we have two Augur of Bolas, uh, one in the blue for a 1-3. Uh, when Augur of Bolas enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. You can reveal an instant or sorcery from amongst them, put it into your hand, and the rest go on the bottom in any order. So, yep, you get to dig three, pick an instant or sorcery straight into hand. So this is a really sort of nice effect. The fact that it's like a 1-3 for two as well is actually okay. You know, it's nice and defensive. Um, M13 had, like, this theme that, like, Nicole Bolas um was was in the set he was the only multicolored card um and so in in blue black and red there are um you know cards that relate to him i think there's an artifact the gem of becoming i want to say that like reference bolas so there's like a minor bolas theme it wasn't like a, a you know a deck it wasn't like a draft archetype or anything it was just flavor wise he was just there in the background um which is which is really nice like nicole bolas he's like a probably my favorite magic the gathering villain honestly yeah, Augur of Bolas, um, super good. Obviously doing exactly what the deck wants to do, which is dig up instant and sorceries. Um, on the subject of digging up instant and sorceries, we've got Archaeomancer. Uh, so two and two blue for a one, two, which is a little expensive, maybe. But when it enters the battlefield, return instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hands. So this is kind of like Grave Digger, but for spells, I would say. Um, yeah, the fact you can get instant or sorceries is okay. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's okay. I would, I mean, in an ideal world, I would like this to be cost, this costed almost the same as, as normal Gravedigger, like three colours and a blue, and a 2-2, two, two, but then that's getting greedy. This is like a perfectly fine ability, um, and it's a perfectly fine card. I'm just being greedy, but it's, you know, again, it works well in this deck, it's doing what it, the deck wants to do, which is get, you know, spells back, so you cast them, and then you get your 
triggers from tower round to get more drakes and kind of close out the game with a bunch of drake tokens in the air. So yeah. Uh, we've got two scroll thieves, uh, two in the blue for a 1-3. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Uh, yep, this is like nice um, combat uh, combat ability to draw more cards and yet yeah, potentially draw more instants and sorceries. Um, obviously having lower power means like it's you know not too much of a hassle for an opponent to block, but you know, it is, it is still nice to have this ability. Um, I do like in kind of future design, um, because there's an, a, there's a creature sim that I think library larcenist, which I think is, is very similar to this, but like the, um, the draw triggers just when you attack rather than having to get through and deal combat damage, which I think is a, a lot better because it's obviously a lot more reliable, um, that's going to go off. But yeah, at the, at the time this was, this was fine, I think. Uh, and then we've got a single fog bank, uh, one in the blue for a naught two defender and flying. So this is a really good reprint from Urza's block way back in the day. Um, and it prevents all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by it. So it's like a super, super good blocker. Um, yeah, it can only you know be killed with you know direct kill spells or burn damage. But yeah, again, exactly what the deck wants to do is kind of just like stall out, draw more spells, like have a more sort of like controly feel, I suppose. Uh, we've got a single Harbour Serpent, uh, four and two blue for a 5-5 five, five with Island Walk. So this actually goes very nicely with the Storm Tide Leviathan. Um, it can't attack unless there are five or more islands on the battlefield, uh, which is, you know, it counts your islands as well, which is fine. Blue is the primary colour in this deck. Um, so yeah, this is fine. It's just kind of like a big a big beat stick. You know, at the very least it can block, I suppose. But, you know, six mana is probably not great just for a 5-5 five, five blocker. But, you know... It's I th I think it's fine again like perfectly fine kind of, um like big bulky common creature with a with a drawback I think it's fi perfectly fine. Uh, we've got three Kraken Hatchlings, uh, so one blue for just a 0-4, uh, which is, yeah, <laughs> again, like really nice, perfect um, early game defensive creature. This is like a really nice um, turn one play, just be like, yep, drop that, and like I'm pretty much safe from um, from attackers for a while. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Like that, there's three of them. So yeah, I think Kraken Hatchling is pretty good. Um, is I think it matters that it doesn't have defender. So you know, if you did find a way of increasing its power or toughness, which I th uh, power or toughness, it's just its power. Um, but yeah, it could attack if you if you need it to. Uh, I think there's some ways of increasing power in this deck, but we'll see. Uh, and then three Windrakes, um, two in the blue for just a two-two flyer. Um, yeah, it's nice. There's three of these. Um, three of these again. I mean, it does feel a little redundant to have these because you know every yeah, and maybe not redundant because Tower Rand is only one card. But it is funny that Tower Rand just makes this for free in addition to you know what instant instant sorcery. But Tower Rand is just one card. There's no guarantee you'll you'll draw it. So uh, yeah, having three Windrakes is fine. So yeah, we yeah we're picking up on the strategy here. It's kind of stall out on the ground. Um, you know, use instants and sorceries and flying creatures to kind of win that way. Uh, so then we have two Mind Claw Shaman. Uh, so four and a red for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, so this is another like one of the Bolas um, aligned cards. Uh, when it ends the battlefield, the target opponent reveals their hand. You may cast an instant or sorcery from the hand without paying its mana cost. Uh, so this is a pretty strong effect. Obviously, it can be a bit of a gamble. But um, I like to view this as like, okay, so five mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, so what that would be just the two two stat line would be like say one and a red so and then three colors to get essentially a card for free um and you know and then they're getting rid of it so yeah it's better than discard uh so yeah i, I like obviously there's always a chance you pick something that's like not useful at the time but like even if you just cast something it's denying your opponent the chance to have it later so yeah i think this is fine and obviously casting it then you know if you had tail round out that triggers that so then you get the drake so yeah it's all it's all good. I like Mind Claw Shaman. It's a good good inclusion, I think, in the deck. Uh, so moving on to non-creature spells, we've got two Talran's Invocation. Uh, so two and two blue just makes two Drake tokens. Um, nicely synergized with Talran because you know if you cast these, you've got Talran out, you actually get three Drakes. Um, and getting three two two flyers for four mana is pretty solid. Uh, so yeah, this is really good, really nice. Uh, there's two of them in the deck. Uh, two divinations, uh, just two and a blue to draw two cards. Yeah, this is just perfect little kind of blue common here just to draw more cards get more fuel for your hand yep um and then a whole bunch of counter spells so we've got a single essence scatter which counts as creature spells a single negate which counts as non-creature spells and a single rewind which is another really interesting reprint actually from urza's block um which is two and two blue uh you counter a spell but then you untap up to four lands so it's essentially getting it for free um which is you know pretty interesting design and then obviously then you've got mana untapped to cast more stuff so yeah rewind is is really interesting actually they decided to reprint it um 
because uh, I was I was under the impression they thought this kind of like free spell mechanic was a bit of a uh, bit of a mistake, but I don't know because there was one in Dominaria as well, which I was surprised by. I think Unwind, which does um, the same. It's like again, it's like counter spell, and you untap some lands, but um, yeah, just obviously <laughs> obviously in moderation, it was fine. Uh, then we've got a single Hydro Surge, uh, one blue mana, just to give a creature minus five, minus naught turn to turn. So, yeah, this is fine. Just kind of like a kind of a cute little trick, I suppose. Um, could potentially swing a combat for you. You know, if you, you know, block it, block a creature, and it's going to kill your creature. You do this, reduce them to zero power, maybe, and then you don't trade. Possibly, I don't know. Um, it's okay. I mean, like. Again, like I keep going back to it, but like the the dream situation is obviously having tower round out, casting this, like doing a fairly minor effect, which is just reducing power, but then also getting a flying Drake out of it is is obviously pretty good. Um, a single unsummon, which is a shame. I kind of wish there'd been two, um, but yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You've got two booster packs now in these um, intro packs when you're buying them, so you might be opening more unsummons. Uh, yeah, single blue manages to bounce a creature, and then a single sleep, uh, two and two blue tap all creatures a. Uh, player controls and they don't untap during that player's next untap step so just kind of lock all their stuff down for essentially two turns um which is again pretty good again just stalls out the board lets you kind of dirtle along with all your um all your non-creep spells and assemble like a small army of flyers um a single switcheroo i think it's a really cute little spell here so four and a blue um you just exchange control of two target creatures which is pretty fun i think um again if you've got tower round out you're making drakes you can just swap uh, a drake token with you know something that your opponent's got um so yeah i think this is a, a fun little card you know just uh you got you know some other small like kraken hatchling or something like that you can just switch around with your opponent's best creature i think this is really um a fun little spell i'm not sure if it's ever been reprinted but it's a shame because i think it's uh, I mean, it's quite a fun fun little card um and then Elixir of Immortality, one of these. Uh, so this goes really nicely, I think, in the deck. So it's one colourless, and then you can pay two and tap it. Uh, you gain five life, and then you shuffle Elixir of Immortality and your graveyard back into um, Owner's Library, um, which is... Uh, which is really good actually because you know you've got all these um you know spells that you're going through that you're casting and then you know you obviously want them all back so <laughs> you just shuffle through and then just get them all again um gain a bit of life as well um so keep yourself in the game so yeah I think Elixir Immortality is um pretty solid card honestly uh and then a single ring of evos isle uh so two mana equipment uh equip for only one uh you spend two the equipped creature gets hexproof until end of turn which is really nice that you can um i actually quite like the sign that's not on all the time because i think it would be way too good if it was just permanent hexproof um i do like you've got to pay to pay to use it i think that's a nice sort of bouncing act and like all these um m13 rings um it gives a bonus if it's on a creature of a certain color so at the beginning of your upkeep um if the equipped creature is blue it gets a plus one plus one counter which is um pretty cool i think i like all these rings i think they're the blue that one is probably the best one just because hexproof is such a strong ability um and then we have a bunch of burn spells so this is like your other path to victory i suppose you've got a bunch of flies and now have a bunch of burn as well so we've got three searing spears this is like the pepsi to lightning strikes coke i would say because lightning strike gets reprinted all the time and searing spear has only been printed once in m13 as far as i know um and it's exactly the same as lightning strike it's one color and a red it's it's instant speed does three damage to any target it's exactly the same as lightning strike but lightning strike keeps getting reprinted probably because i don't know it's cooler i suppose it's more evocative than searing spear but yeah weird that searing spear has been never been reprinted and lightning strike keeps getting reprinted but yeah seeing so this perfectly good burn spell um you know this is this is i feel like you know, i always I always say like oh lightning bolt is super super good i will admit i think lightning bolt is maybe too good like one red mana for three damage i think this is perfect i think two uh two mana for instant speed is is uh, for three damage i think is like a perfect rate so yeah and also we were going into what return to raveling which i think was a bit i don't know slower as a format i don't know i don't know enough about formats but yeah in, in any case searing spear pretty good card i think um nice there's three of them in here um a single smelt uh one red mana just to destroy an artifact yep this is perfectly fine um strictly better shatter um and then a single turn to slag uh so three and two red so this is from uh scars of mirrodin uh so three and two red uh sorcery do five damage to a creature and you destroy all equipment that's attached to that creature um kind of fun if you played all these m13 decks against each other and you had this on a creature that maybe had um 
uh you know like all the you know it's the the ring from its deck on it and then you could destroy the um ring and also potentially kill the creature it's a little expensive i think at five mana but it is it is five damage which is a fairly chunky amount it is also potentially getting you um sort of a two or maybe even three for one if you're destroying a bunch of equipment and you know it's it's a common it's fine i think it's i think it's perfectly okay um and then a single evolving wilds all these m13 decks have a single evolving wilds which is good because they're two colored and it's good to teach sort of newer players about you know uh, land fixing and stuff uh, and then 15 islands and eight mountains so yeah um so let's talk about maybe some alternate cards so i did say about the storm tide leviathan maybe i i think the storm tide leviathan is fine i want to make that very clear but i think in this deck we could have had something that was maybe a little more on theme with what the deck wants to do which is play around with instant sorcery spells so spell twine i thought maybe uh so it's five and a blue you exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard and an instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard and then you copy them and then you cast the copies without paying the mana cost and you exile spell twine so you basically just choose two spells and be like right i'm just going to cast both those spells and then they're out of the game forever so that may be potentially um but i think the storm tide leviathan at the end day is just a big creature which is a lot more straightforward and yeah, this is maybe a little kind of tricksy and fiddly to work with. Uh, but in terms of burn, um, there's really good options for burn, actually, in M13. Um, so Chandra's Fury as a potential as well. This maybe could have been instead of the turn to slag. Um, yeah, it's four and a red. Um, instant speed does four damage to a player, which is a yeah, really good chunk of damage, and then one damage to each creature they control. Um, so wipe out all their small creatures as well. This is like a re- and a common as well. I think this is really solid um, as a burn spell. Um, and also Volcanic uh, Geyser, which is basically instant speed blaze just for an extra red. So yeah, that's a potential as well. You know, so I feel like this is a deck that would have maybe um gone on for a while like you know would have played sort of like the long game like stalling out and stuff so you could have built up like quite a lot of mana and then just done a big expert at the end but um yeah overall i think i don't think there's any actually really bad cards in it i think it's like actually fairly solid i can't um what maybe oh i can't really think i actually generally can't think of a card in here which i think is like not very good i think the only thing i think of was maybe maybe the turn to slag and that still has a purpose so yeah, I I really like this one. Um, it's blue red spells, uh, which is uh, you know an archetype I really like. Um, Tower Rand is a great legendary creature, like really good for your face rare. Um, yeah, I think this would have been a good time playing this one um, out of the box. But what are your thoughts on this deck after seeing it? If you have any thoughts or stories or comments or opinions about the deck or any of the cards in it, stick a comment below and I'll give those a read. Always like doing that. But I'll be back next time. Uh, I'm going to look at another M13. Uh, intro pack and uh i think it's my favorite one honestly i'm gonna have a lot of fun talking about it but we'll see you next time uh thanks for watching listening and have a great day